Greetings to all of you, my dear sisters and brothers, and my dear friends, and all of you are welcome. Too many broadcasting and streams in the desert, our daily devotional. <clears throat> this is your pastor, Yeti. I want to excuse myself and pardon to you that... Um, I was a couple of days away and there was no place to have connection with the Wi-Fi. So and I forgot to tell that to all my broadcast friends. So excuse me, pardon me for this. Normally I tell you where I am and we were up in Big Bear and you know that the mountains doesn't give you that strong Wi-Fi, so for broadcasting it's streaming, so that's more difficult. So, but there we are again, coming along with each other and enjoying our time together. Today it is sorrow is better than laughter, because a sad face is good for the heart. And that is from Ecclesiastes Chapter 7, verse 3. Sorrow, under the power of divine grace, performs various mysteries in our lives. Sorrow reveals unknown depths of the soul and unknown capacities for suffering and service. Light-hearted, frivolous people are always shallow and are never aware of their own meagerness or lack of of depth. Sorrow is good God's tool to plow the depths of the soul, that it may yield richer harvests. If humankind were still in a glorified state, having never fallen, then the strong floods of divine joy would be the force God would use to reveal our soul's capacities. But in this fallen world, sorrow, yet will despair rem removed, is the power chosen to reveal us to ourselves. Accordingly, it is sorrow that causes us to take the time to think deeply and seriously. Sorrow makes us move more slowly and considerately and examine our motives and attitudes. It opens within us capacities of the heavenly life and it makes us willing to set our capacities afloat on a limitless sea of service for God and for others. Imagine a village of lazy people living out the foot, living at the foot of a great mountain range, yet who have never ventured out to explore the valleys and canyons back in the mountains. One day, a great thunderstorm goes carrying through the mountains, turning the hidden valleys into echoing trumpets and revealing their inner recesses, like the twisted shapes of a giant seashell. The villagers at the foot of the hills are astonished at the labyrinths and the unexplored recesses of a region so nearly and yet so unknown. And so it is with many people who casually live on the other edge of their own souls until great thunderstorms of sorrow reveal hidden depths within, which were never before known or suspected. God never uses anyone to a great degree until he breaks the person completely. Joseph experienced more sorrow than the other sons of Jacob, and it led him into a mystery of food for all the nations. For this reason, the Holy Spirit said of him, Joseph is a fruitful vine near a spring whose branches climb over a wall. Genesis 49 verse 22 It takes sorrow to expand and deepen the soul, from the heavenly life. The dark brown soil is turned, 
by the sharp pointed claw. And I've lesson learned. My life is but a field, stretched out beneath God's sky. Some harvest rich to yield, where grows the golden grain, where fate, where sympathy, in a furrow cut my pain. Every person and every nation must endure lessons in God's school of, of adversity. In the same way, we say, Blessed is the night, for it reveals the stars to us. We can say, Blessed is sorrow, for it reveals God's comfort. A flood once washed away a poor man's home and mile, taking with it everything he owned in the world. He stood at the scene of his great loss, broken-hearted and discouraged. Yet after the waters had subsided, he saw something shining in the river banks that the flood had washed bare. It looks like gold, he said. It was gold. The storm that had Im impoverished him made him rich. So it is oftentimes in life. My beautiful people, Sometimes you are always afraid of the sufferings and the pain and the loss. And I don't say that you have to laugh about it. But the spiritual insight in this is that you are embraced by God's presence. That God is there for you. That God offers his compassion and wholeness in you. But we in our humanity forgot so much of that deep, deep concern that God has for us, his unconditional love. Sometimes we are so spoiled that our eyes get blur and we don't see clear enough in the things we have. The most important thing is our soul because none of us material stuff we will take with us or when we move to another state or just another house. Sometimes we have to leave things or soul things because we cannot bring it in that new house and that is exactly the same with our soul our soul has different mansions and in every chamber something is going on there and don't stay too long in that room that is so much overshadowed not with the light of the spirit but of parts that are difficult sometimes it's better to move on in another room where the Holy Spirit reveal new things to you or heal you. Open your soul to the one he says, I love you with everything that I have and he give his life for you. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye.